Is it just me or are gatherers way easier to level up this expansion? I know some of you are just finishing the main story and some of you are still battling the end game boss login queue, but I wanted to share a video on how actually pretty easy it is to level up gatherers. So let's just jump right into it. I will be mentioning city names and things. So if you're not quite done and you don't want any spoilers, then this video might not be for you, but I'm not going to give any MSQ spoilers. One of the things I always talked about was making sure to do your grand company turn in for crafters and gatherers. This is still a little true for gathering as you usually can pick up those items a lot cheaper than the crafted items. I will go over crafting in another video, but for gathering, I pretty much got all my gatherers from 80 to 90 with less than a half a day probably. I felt like they made it a little bit easier to level up from what I remember before, but that's another topic. If you're under level 80 or you're just starting, then comment down below if you want a complete guide 1 to 90. When I started Endwalker, I was geared and melded from Shadowbringers. I don't think that's going to change your journey though. Simply item level 500, Land Saints gear, which is the script gear, would probably suffice. One of the people in my Discord, Zavius, of course, was doing it with level 71 script gear. So I think that you guys will probably be okay. So let's talk experience. There are two items, one particular that you absolutely must have, and that is the Squadron Gathering Survival Manual that you can get with white scripts. If you don't have this, get some white scripts and go to this vendor as it gives you millions of experience, even though it's halved at level 80 and above, it's still the biggest thing that's gonna get you to 90 as quickly as possible. If you have your squadron leveled up, then you can also do these missions right here in order to get a 20% buff. You also might have the free company buff as well, and that's gonna help in this too. But that White Scripts collectible manual is going to be the number one thing that you're gonna wanna get immediately. They did say in the patch notes that they're not gonna make it exponentially more difficult, and I agree, I don't believe they did. The first thing I did is when I played through the story, I just simply collected the nodes and materials as I was running by them, since most of the time you're running right through cluster of gathering nodes for either miner or botanist. Doing this will always give you that one-time bonus and will actually net you quite a few experience points as you're going through the story. I also did leaves. Simply grabbing the leaves from Charlayan as you play through the main story was probably the best decision I made. You could do this after you complete the main story, but I was just kind of killing three birds with one stone type of thing. And I simply just grabbed all of the miner, all of the botanist, and didn't teleport back once you finish one. This right here netted me at least two to four levels as I was playing through and really didn't require much time. From here and once you complete the MSQ or before, it depends on what you wanna focus on, you can go one of two ways. You can work towards getting collectible turn-ins, which is a very valid way, or you can simply focus on leaf quest. If you just want to simply just do collectibles, then make sure you have a ton of cordials or high cordials so then you can make it go a lot quicker and you want to get the highest collectible rating for the most experience. Once you unlock the House of Splendors, you'll be able to turn in those collectibles to the vendor. Doing a few of these collectibles will net you a level literally in no time. Bonus is that you're gonna need white scripts anyway, so doing collectibles is a really good method since you wanna turn those in for the folklore, which is gonna give you your special regional notes. For super new players, the gathering collectibles are the materials that have a white square at the bottom right of them in the gathering menu. If you click over the collectible menu, it will show you a few that are also on timers. This is how Final Fantasy XIV regulates how quickly people can level up or gather these collectibles. Most of the time, there's a collectible every two hour that pops up in any given section, and you can find those in the menu as well. These are the ones that you'll turn into the collectible vendor for that sweet experience in scripts. Anything under 90, so 80 to 89, will give you white scripts, and any of the level 90 collectibles will give you purple scripts, which are considered endgame. Even if you can collect level 90, you can turn them in until your gatherer is actually level 90, so just keep them until you hit level 90 if you run into any of those. If you want a video specifically on collectibles, comment down below and I'd happy to make one. The other way you can do is just by doing leaf quests. Then it's just better to grab both miner and botanist as they're usually in the same area. I will say if you don't have flying, then you might not see a huge return on this if you're going to have to walk everywhere. But you should be getting those ether currents as you're playing through the main story anyway. So remember your ether compasses in your collections menu and get those as you're playing through the main story. 
It's not uncommon and probably where you're gonna fall is the mix between the two. As I was doing the leave quest for the different areas, the collectible timers would pop and I would make sure to take the time to go run over and collect them before they went away. Doing the above method, I literally leveled up my gatherers within less than four to five hours, maybe even a little less. I really hope you got some value out of this video. Don't forget to limit break through that subscribe button down below and click that notification bell to get more Endwalker videos. I really want to do a practical gathering and crafting guide for complete beginners, so comment down below if you'd like to see that. I also want to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters as your continued support really allows me to keep making videos. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy Endwalker guides and tutorials, then you can click here.